Offset goes to war for his solo career and sues Migos' longtime record label. The dispute stems from the rapper dropping a song 54321 last Friday and quality control music allegedly attempting to stake a claim to the rights. Throughout the last couple of months, the legendary rap group Migos has separated themselves from each other with Takeoff and Quavo staying together and Offset being left by himself. Now the separation was very very clear as Takeoff and Quavo began to steady release music in their new duo Unk and Few in their song Hotel Lobby. Now this disconnect between the three artists who are actually all family is not the whole focal point of this video but it is a point of it. Now the real reason Offset suing his quality control label is for staking a claim in a solo career. Now in simple terms, they're trying to say that they own the rights to his music as a solo artist, specifically the quality control manager, P. Now the Migos group were the hottest group in the rap game during the 2015 and 2018 span. They originally signed with quality control back in 2013 in August as they gained traction shortly after the Young Rich Nation project was released in 2015. But if you want to be really technical, their first hottest, hottest album was Culture back in 2017. And if you ask me, this had the streets on lock. I'm talking about, yeah, T-Shirt, Kelly Price featuring Travis Scott, Slippery with Gucci Mane, and how could I forget Bad and Bougie with Lil Uzi Vert, got 21 Savage music video, and this was peak Migos at the time. Now, like, if we're being serious, I mean, I actually want to talk about the hottest album, Rap or Hip Hop, in 2017, with zero skips, as people love to say. The culture is easily top five, 100%. So according to the Rolling Stone magazine, a motion for a lawsuit was filed Tuesday as Quality Control actually owns all the rights to any music he's made with addition to 50% of all net advances, royalties, musical compositions, and publishing incomes. Now it's clear as day to see that Offset and the Quality Control team do not have the greatest label to artist relationship and this is actually seen on Twitter as him and the label manager P went back and forth. Now this happened a couple days ago saying, the last lawsuit was filed publicly and dismissed quietly. Let's see how this one goes. Been to real for artists lame ish. Everybody knows the real problem. Man to Mac like I'm the problem. I paid millions to get my rights back. You blackballed me. I ain't said ish one time homie. I ain't spoke to you in two years. Now I drop and you want your name on my credit. Now it seems like Offset's War with the QC label has been something that's been going on for the last couple of years but is now brought to the forefront. Now we saw that last Friday, August 19th, he actually released a song 54321 that didn't really have much push from the label and you can only think that the fact that he's suing the label that they're definitely not going to be promoting his music by any means. Actually, you know, staking a career, basically trying to claim to the music and say that they own it so that even if he does win, he leaves with nothing. Now listen, right? You probably see the deal that Offset signed basically giving QC ownership to everything. And you're probably thinking, Offset signed a bad deal. Oh, he's in a 360. Why didn't he negotiate? Oh, he's in a slave deal. Which is something that people say when they hear a lot of people sign bad deals. Now, now I promise you, this is not the first and last deal that artists will accept and basically be repeated by someone later along the line. Now, Offset and the Migos and literally anybody who raps in pretty much came from nothing would sign a contract that would provide them with some form of financial comfort and stability at the time. Now, I'm not aware of the exact value of the advance they signed for when they signed to QC, but I'm pretty sure it was decent enough at the time. In 2013, when the Migos first signed to Quality Control, I doubt they knew they would achieve this much success in their future, which would actually benefit them the least because of worldwide growth in the industry. It's like, if you had no money or no leverage, something that the labels have both of, of course, and I said, I could earn you $100,000 a year from your rapping skills and put you in a position to be a global star you would most likely accept it. Even if I made a million dollars and you got 100K, which is 10% of my earnings, it's almost like the saying, boss makes a dollar, worker makes a dime. Which looking at it, 10% isn't horrible. But if I were to profit $10 million a year off your same rapping skills, and you're maybe bringing home 800K to 1 million, 1 million as the maximum of course, you'd be pretty big mad that I'm making $10 million off you, which is understandable, but you have to understand that is part of the business as labels do take risks when signing artists. However, this risk offset, takeoff, Quavo actually paid off. It's a really common cycle that is basically being replicated by multiple labels, which make the labels get rich off of you as the artist, which is essentially a cash cow. Now we talked about QC as a label, a couple cash cows we have is obviously the Migos, but even bigger solo act is Lil Baby, man, because ever since Lil Baby came into the game in 2018, obviously at the more mainstream level, of course, he's been the hottest thing since what? chocolate milk, sliced bread, like he's really him at the, like I don't really got anything more to say than that, but it's simply the truth. But it's like I said before, 
this is a business. Many artists are unaware of actually how the business works when they first sign it because they just don't have the financial literacy. And it's probably a lot of words and writing if you ever look at the documents because the label, the agreements, the record deal, it's all a whole contract as a business where you have to uphold the rights and they uphold the rights and pay you. And it's obviously a one-sided thing because once the label starts profiting really well, the artist is kind of thrown on the bus and just have to do as they say. And the artists often try to basically get renegotiate, try to buy the masters back, which is actually something that also tried to do, giving them millions, but I don't think it went through. I think they rejected it, and that's kind of why they still have ownership to all his, you know, royalties and monetization and stuff of that nature. Now, I think the biggest confusion here is, since the Migos were a group and they separated, I'm thinking, I'm not 100% sure, I'm thinking that Offset is probably assuming that since he has a solo career and he's doing stuff without them, that the label shouldn't have as much earnings and basically get a cut of everything that he does, of course. And if you go to the actual release of his recent song, 54321, it was actually released by Motown Records and Yoongi Recording Inks and not Quality Control Music LLC. So he's probably thinking, since he's a different publishing company and things of that nature, they shouldn't really have any ties to the music or get any cuts of it and they shouldn't have a stake in his rights. Now I'm gonna keep it 100, man. This is all the information regarding this whole incident, this whole case. I'm wondering, I'm very curious to see how this case is gonna go in the whole lawsuit, man. And it just leads me to think, will Offset win this lawsuit and start a successful solo career? Or will all this court processing and the Migos breaking up and all the basically background behind the scenes thing that's basically tearing him down as an artist, destroy the leeway he has and end his rap career?